my personal unbiased opinion is that people who believe in theistic evolution are trying to find a nice little God that they can put in a box someplace and control him because they don't want him controlling their lifestyle. That's my personal opinion. Thirdly, it's not in the character of my God to use misfits, suffering, and death like evolution calls for. Evolution calls for blind chance, randomness, nobody knows what's going on, let's just toss it out and see what happens. That's not in the character of the God that I worship. Fourthly, it nullifies the need for the death of Christ. If there was already death here in the world, if, if, see, if creation is true, then man brought death into the world, and death is a terrible thing. If evolution is true, death brought man into the world, and death is a wonderful thing because that's how we get ahead. See, if evolution is true, one species has to, or one animal within the species has to evolve a little better than the rest, and the rest of them have to die in order for the good one to take over the, the living space. That's Adolf Hitler's philosophy exactly. Number five, there's no evidence for evolution anyway, so why compromise a perfectly good Bible with a dumb theory like that? I was asked earlier to define macroevolution. Macroevolution is simply an accumulation of microevolutionary change over time such that you no longer get two species who are capable of mating naturally and producing fertile offspring. Uh, that's what Dr. Hovind just said happens. You have animals branching out until they're no longer able to reproduce. That's macroevolution, and uh, I'd like the 250,000 in small bills delivered to my office. I mean, that's it, folks. That's, that's our definition of macroevolution. It's the definition that's in all the science textbooks. That's macroevolution in a nutshell. You get enough accumulated microevolutionary changes until you can't have two species mating and producing the same kind of animal anymore. That's it. Uh, in fact, I put the chart up there and I explained it to you. That's what it is. Um, why can't you believe evolution and creationism? I don't see why you can't. I don't think that if you're a theistic evolutionist or whatever term you want to call them, that you're necessarily putting God in a box. Um, trying to control God. Uh, I think it's people that are trying to figure out a way that they can merge their faith, their belief, their, their notion of spirituality with what their eyes and their mind tells them, what we observe about the natural order of the world. You know, there, there has to be a way. If I believe, and I'm, I'm using the I rhetorically, if I believe there's a God, but I also understand that evolution is the way things work, then I'm going to try and put the two things together, and I don't think they have to be mutually exclusive. Um, can you prove there is a God? You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't try to make such an offer, but you, you, you know that offer, the $250,000 offer, you could just as easily twist it around and say, I'll offer anybody in the room $250,000 if they can offer me proof that God exists to my satisfaction, because that's what Mr. Hovind is saying. You have to prove it to my satisfaction in order for me to give you the money. Well, Again, I'll ask what his criteria are. Well, proving all five of those literally means you do have to create a new universe because that's the first step in his uh, a list of things that you have to prove. If I could create a new uh, uh, um, uh, universe, I would be like a god. And evolution doesn't teach us that we're trying to be God. We're just trying to be people. Thank you. OK, my question uh, here was asked, what about the geologic column? Discuss the significance or lack of it to the layers of geologic formation. The geologic column was invented in the 1830s by many people. Charles Lyell's the primary culprit. Uh, each layer was given a different name and age and an index fossil. I taught our science for 15 years. Uh, the geologic column is the Bible for the evolutionist. It only exists one place in the world, and that is in the textbooks. There is no geologic column. They know that, those who study it. This author said, if there were a column of sediments, Unfortunately, no such column exists. There is no geologic column. There are many layers to the earth, that's true, but those all formed during one big flood in the days of Noah. The fact that you can prove this because in between these layers there are seldom, if ever, found any erosion marks. Now, don't you think if that layer sat there for 10 million years waiting for the next one to be laid down, there'd be a little bit of rain? Plus, where did the next layer come from but from further sediments, which indicates more water moving? So, of course, there'd be erosion marks. There aren't erosion marks between these layers. Um, the geologic column is a hoax. Uh, it doesn't exist. It's based on circular reasoning. I go through that on my videotape number four for 
30 minutes, about the geologic column. The layers are not different ages. They cannot be. And it's all based on circular reasoning. I prove all that from lots of quotes on video number four. Let me get to one more point in my last minute. Uh, it's all dated by index fossils. Uh, get up here. Oh, right here. No. Nope. All over the world, petrified trees are found standing straight up. They're running through multiple rock layers. Now, these rock layers are dated at vastly different ages. They'll say this layer is 10 million years older than the one you know, above it, and yet we find petrified trees standing up in the vertical position. Sometimes petrified trees are upside down, running through many rock layers. Those rock layers all had to be laid down in a big flood. The tree didn't stand there for millions of years waiting for the mud to form around it. Mount St. Helens is producing the exact same phenomena right now from the thousands of trees that were blown into Spirit Lake back in 1980. They're being buried standing up. None of them grew there. And it's going to look like a miniature geologic column someday. And it, it's, it, it happened because of a flood. So the geologic column, it's tragic that this is taught to students in school as if it's some kind of fact when it's absolutely not. Uh, it's a bunch of baloney. We cover that in video number four and also on my website. Thank you. The geologic uh, column doesn't necessarily exist in someone's mind. There, there probably is no place on Earth where you're going to find a, a 4.5 billion year old layer uh, and every single layer in between. Um, because of the natural processes of the Earth, the way we understand the natural processes of the Earth, uh, we have two, two basic processes, deposition and erosion. Deposition puts things down and erosion takes things away. To say there's no evidence that, any, that there was any stability, well, I would ask about the Lake Tanyanyika footprints, the hominid footprints that are 3.2 million years old. There was a layer of volcanic sediment deposited. Some early humans, early hominids, walked across the ash layer. And then there was another volcanic eruption that buried the footprints. So that obviously there had to be some point in time when that landscape was stable. People were walking across it. It didn't just all appear in one instance. In fact, where did these footprints come from if all the human beings were, were being wiped out in this single flood instance, and the ones that survived were all on the ark, safe and sound? Who were these folks that were walking across leaving these footprints in these layers where there should be nothing in between these layers? Because the layers all were put down at the same time. Um, uh, in terms of finding things like trees in the geologic column, we find all kinds of unusual things in the geologic column. It's because the Earth is not static. It moves around a lot. In fact, um, if you want to understand stratigraphy, which is the science, the study of the, of the layers of the Earth, and you'll learn this in geology class, you have to understand that we talk about uh, layers being deposited, the oldest ones first, kind of like building a layer cake. You put the first layer of cake on, put a little icing on it, put the next layer on top. Which one was there first? The one at the bottom. But we also talk about that in a conformable sequence. That means where there hasn't been any evidence of earthquakes, or volcanism, or things where things get shifted around, things get mixed up. Um, that's quite common. And you have to be able to read the Earth. Um, I have to stop there, but thank you. Oh, I guess I have the next question. This one says, Mr. Hartman, why do you think people should have more than one religion? And if you read the Bible, why do you teach evolution? I mean, the answer is clear, black and white. I don't think people should have more than one religion. I think you should have whatever religious beliefs you're comfortable with. Religious beliefs, lack of religious beliefs. I'm not going to dictate to you how you should believe, whether you should believe, whether you should not believe. That's why I don't stand up here and tell you that if you accept evolution, you must reject God. Any more than I will say, if you accept God, you must automatically reject evolution. Um, if you read the Bible, why do you teach evolution? I mean, the answer is clear, black, and white. Boy, not everybody reads the Bible. What do we do with those people? We just tell them they're wrong. They're all going to hell, by the way. 